This section will discuss the language of feedback. During this section, we will be discussing what is feedback, types of feedback, methods of giving feedback, tips for giving feedback, and characteristics of effective feedback. Feedback is a crucial element in the learning process. Feedback is not criticism because criticism is evaluative. Feedback is the means by which teachers enable students to close the gap in order to take learning forward and improve their performance. In The Power of Feedback, an article published in the Review of Educational Research in 2007, authors John Hattie and Helen Timperley point out that specific information about how the learner is performing a task is much more helpful than mere praise or especially criticism. In particular, their research, as well as others, have found that feedback is most effective when it provides information on exactly what the learner is doing right and on what he or she is doing differently and more successfully than in previous attempts. There are four main types of feedback. Effective is the first. The goal is to get the student to internalize the effective feedback to use the suggested strategies independently on future work. This is intended to be used by the learner to independently move their reasoning to the next level. This ties in very well with the mission of our academic support centers to make our users independent learners. The second type of feedback is descriptive. The goal is to improve student achievement by telling the learner how to move forward in the learning process. It's intended to tell the learner what needs to be improved. The third type is evaluative. The goal here is to measure student achievement with a score or a grade intended to summarize student achievement. And the final type is motivational, which the goal is to make the learner feel good and intended to encourage and support the learner. Only effective feedback pushes the learner to improve and move to the next level. The other three do not give guidance on how to improve the learner's reasoning. Feedback is most effective when it focuses on the task, is specific in its nature as to what the learner has done well, and what they need to work on next, and is given while the task is still relevant. Let's now discuss the methods of giving feedback. Think before saying anything about what you want to communicate with your feedback, then Choose how you want to offer that feedback. The sandwich method. This is the method in which you give good news, bad news, and then follow up and end with good news. Critical feedback is couched between the two compliments. Good feedback begins with observations. These points can be complementary or critical but it's crucial that we refrain from drawing inferences about why they happened. We can only speak from where we stand, so we have to be careful not to jump to conclusions about the recipient's perspective. Discussing impact is a useful way to make your suggestions persuasive and more likely to be adopted by the recipient. The goal here is to explain the consequences of the observations Empathize with the recipient by revealing that we used to have the same problem. We want to end by communicating suggestions for how to improve on the critical observations made previously. Some further tips about giving feedback. Supply information about what the learner is doing rather than simply praise or criticism. Research by Hattie and others has found that feedback is most effective when it provides information on exactly what the learner is doing right and on what he or she is doing differently and more successfully than in previous attempts. Take care in how you present feedback. 
empower learners rather than controlling them by giving them access to information about their own performance and teaching them how to use it. Orient feedback around goals. Feedback is most effective, research has found, when it directly addresses the learner's advancement towards a goal and not other less pertinent aspects of performance. In other words, if it's not relevant to the goal, don't bring it up. Let us conclude with this slide that lists some of the characteristics of effective feedback. Be specific. Focus on the behavior rather than the person. Take into account the needs of the receiver. Be sure that the feedback is solicited rather than imposed. Share information rather than giving advice. Feedback should be well-timed. Do not overload the receiver and allow time for the reviewer to ask more questions. Parslow in 1995 suggests that communication is a two-way process that leads to appropriate action. In the context of developing competence, it is not an exaggeration to describe feedback as the fuel that drives improved performance.